Good afternoon, everybody. It's me, Jessica, your health fitness program manager from McLean, and I'm looking forward to guiding you through today's mind-body connection. We're gonna do a combo of some seated and some standing postures today, because I know we've done a lot of seated stuff, both in my and Jen's classes this week. So I wanna make sure we get an opportunity to really stand up, to stretch our arms out as much as possible, to take up as much space as we can during today's practice. We will get started in a seated position of your choice on the floor, so you might want to bring a prop to help you relax as we start off with just a couple stretches and breaths. Um, got a couple minutes till we get started. Highly recommend just creating the most enjoyable space for yourself. Today I am jamming on Mrs. Meyer's Honeysuckle Scent because I really believe that just making your space smell nicer encourages you to take some really big deep breaths. So maybe you have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee that you can start breathing with and I will meet you on your mat or your floor space in just a couple minutes at quarter after. One more amazing minute. I'm trying to remember what color pants I wore yesterday. Was I <laughs> was I wearing the same color pants? I have like 12. No, seriously, I have like three pairs of this color though. Changing my clothes every day, y'all, and I hope that you are too. I did read an article this week about um, saving the Earth's resources by showering less now that we socialize less. It was very interesting. If you'd like to hear more about it, let me know. I will find that article and send it to you. For now, welcome y'all. It's that magical time. Thank you for joining me, Jessica, your health fitness program manager from McLean for today's mind-body connection. So make your way down to the floor into whatever seated posture feels right for you. If you prefer to be kneeling, if you prefer to have your feet a little bit more wide open, go for it. If you notice that those knees are coming all the way up towards your chest, I encourage you, hi Uncle Buddy, to open your legs a little bit wider or consider sitting yourself up on something with a little structure. If you don't happen to have a block, you can always fold up a towel or a blanket or even stack a couple pillows under your bum. Let's go ahead and get started from right here. Ah, just start to come into your breath. First thing to do is just slow your breath down, slow your mind down. If you find that you're darting your eyes around the room looking at lots of different things, 
Consider closing your eyes here as we start off in breathing, or just finding one space that you can relax your eyes to relax your mind as we continue to relax our breath. Ask yourself, where are you breathing today? As you get started, it's very normal for your breath to be at the top of your chest. I want you to slow things down even more and take long, deep inhales, filling all the way to the bottom of your belly and diaphragm. Maybe even take a moment with your lungs full, enjoying that sensation before you slowly, gently exhale. I like to inhale in through my nose and exhale out through my nose or mouth. Find that really helps to slow the breath down. It also cools it down a little bit more before it hits your lungs, which can help you feel a little more relaxed. As we've been breathing together for just over a minute, I encourage you to now bring a little focus to your body. Notice if on your inhales, your shoulders are rising up towards your ears and just notice it's okay if they are, that's typically a sign of stress. If you can work to Find a little weight in your elbows, relaxing them heavy down towards the floor. You can even find some grounding with your hands either on your knees or palms facing up towards the ceiling to receive more of the energy that is in the air around you. Notice if you're bringing any extra um, tilting to your back, either uh, rounding forward or arching forward. And do your best to find a little contraction of your abdominal core. You'll still have plenty of room to breathe if you just knit that rib cage in towards each other, bringing a little bit of structure. It's gonna help your back feel protected as well. We'll spend one more minute here just breathing. As you continue, with these inhales, perhaps you're even starting to practice some ujjayi breath. A slight constriction on the back of your throat can even create the sound of a snoring sensation as you press your tongue up to the roof of your mouth right behind your teeth and make your breath sound like the roll of the ocean. Next, we're gonna take a gentle warm up of our neck, work into our shoulders, work into the sides of the body before we make our way to the feet. So ground those sit bones on the floor or on your prop, draw your belly in again, really work as much as possible to keep this length through your spine. Find an inhale and create a little extra space through all of your vertebrae as you stretch your head up towards the ceiling. And on your exhale, tuck your chin to your chest. Use the full length of your exhale to get your chin to your chest. And then in your inhale, without finding any rounding or arching of the back, lift your chin up towards the ceiling. So stop when you find yourself working to squeeze those shoulder blades together and push your chest forward. And then take another breath, inhale, chin down to the chest. Exhale up to the ceiling. Three more, just like this nice and slow. Inhale down to the chest. Exhale up to the ceiling, maybe even taking a little extra stretch through your jaw to really bring the stretch onto the front of your throat. Inhale down to chest. Exhale up to ceiling. And this time, inhale, bring your chin back down to neutral. Knit that rib cage in and gently drop your ear to your right shoulder. We'll stay here for a couple breaths. If you don't feel enough of a stretch through the left side of the neck, you can always walk your left hand fingertips away 
And if that's still not enough stretch, inhale your right arm up towards the ceiling, bend at the elbow, just a slight bit of pressure from the pads of the fingers on the side of the head by the ear can increase the stretch that you feel on your neck. Find what feels good for you. Let's take three more breaths. Pardon me. If you use your hands to help you stretch, use your next inhale to lift them up, relax them to the floor. Once again, find that length through the crown of your head, the neutral chin to your chest. Big inhale to lift up, always find length first, and exhale, bring your ear to your left shoulder. Remember, both sides of the body aren't the same, so you don't have to do the exact same thing on the opposite side, but if it feels good for you, walk your right hand fingertips further away, increase the stretch through that side of the body. And if you need to, you can inhale your left arm up towards the ceiling, bend at the elbow, place the pads of the finger by the ear. And right here, we'll take three more breaths, still continuing to find as much lift and length as possible. If you use your hands to help you find a bit your stretch on your inhale, release them on your exhale, relax them down. Let's take a moment and just shake those shoulders out. Maybe even place your hands behind you if your back's feeling tired to feel a little bit more supported. We've just got two more seated stretches before we're going to stand up. All right. So once again, finding yourself in Sukhasana or joining me a little closer in Imperfect Pose, we're gonna inhale both arms up overhead this time, and then I want you to create the length from your waist, so draw those shoulders down and back. Keep your left hand stretching up towards the ceiling as you reach your right hand down towards the floor. Maybe you have a prop here, the floor feels really far away, and that's okay. You can even bend your elbow and reach your fingers all the way over to the right side to extend the stretch down through your lower back. Inhale, bring both arms up towards the ceiling. Exhale, left hand comes down, ground it with something on the floor as you reach that right arm up overhead. If you find that you need to slow things down or hang out a little bit longer on one side or the other, I encourage you to take that time. We'll move through the same motion just a couple more times on each side. Make sure that you do find an equal movement so that we're stretching our body the same. And we're working with those long, beautiful breaths still. We'll find one more stretch to each side. Here we go. Last ones. Inhale back up through center. Exhale, final stretch. Bring those arms back up overhead one more time. Next up, we're gonna come into a spine twist. You can keep your arms up overhead and exhale to turn into your twist. And then inhale back up through center. Exhale, turn to the opposite side. If you don't wanna bring those arms up overhead, you can always walk your hands across your thighs. Still moving with your breath, still releasing those shoulders away from your ears. So just come into a nice gentle twist. We're just warming up our body still. It doesn't have to be your deepest spine twist yet. I am using either my hand or the outside of my arm or palm pressed against the outer thigh to help me deepen the twist just a little bit. <sighs> Feels so good. Let's do one more on each side. Just moving with intention. No rush, no race. Finding what feels good for our bodies today. <sighs> Great work. One more stretch on the floor because it's going to feel good. Keep your sit bones ground. Bring your hands in front of you. And this might be as far as you're able to go today. Keeping this nice flat back as you continue to reach forward. As long as your sit bones are down on the floor, once you've found that big reach, you can even take a bend of your elbows, bring your forearms to the floor. Find some big rounding in your back here. Mm. 
And then we're gonna pull ourselves forward. So walk those hands forward. You can come onto your knees. Let's come into tabletop. Coming into tabletop, giving our backs a little bit of a rest because I know that sitting in Sukhasana can be challenging for some. So get your hands, palms underneath of your shoulders and spread your fingers really wide like a starfish. And I want you to feel a nice little stretch between each of the webbings of your fingers. And then if you're using a mat, line up either your ring finger or your middle finger with the side of your mat. Doesn't have to actually touch, but just make them parallel to each other. Go ahead, press into your knees, even find some engagement of the tops of your toes touching down to the floor. Make sure that you're lifted in your upper body. We're not sinking our chest down towards the floor to create shoulders as earrings and keeping these mostly straight arms. Go ahead, find some rounding in the back Tuck your chin to your chest, look towards your knees, maybe even towards your belly button as we come into cat. Be the biggest, scariest Halloween cat that you can possibly be. And then keeping those arms nice and straight and making sure you're not sinking your chest down. We pull the chest forward. We send the glutes towards the back of the room. You can even press your knees into the floor and really create some separation of your backside, a nice stretch, look up towards the ceiling, as big of an arch in your back as possible. Now feel free to change and just move with your breath. Find what feels good for you, if it feels right to shake your cow's tail or your cat's tail. And then we'll explore just a couple different movements right here, just in case you hadn't thought of them and maybe they were what was meant for you today. So let's go ahead and make some circles with our hips. Whichever direction feels good for you. So gently pressing yourself back, almost like you're coming into child's pose. We'll go three times around in this direction. And then when you come back through tabletop one more time, come back to neutral, press into those hands, palms, and then three times around in the opposite direction. Next, we'll bring a little bit more attention to the shoulders. So this time staying up in tabletop, bringing the weight a little forward, lifting through one shoulder and then the other, drawing one shoulder forward. You'll still take a little movement through your hips like we're a delightful snake. And then think about moving in the opposite direction. Feel this in my abs. I feel this in the mid, upper back. You can bring it a little more into the shoulders by coming back to gently rocking back and forth. Bringing those shoulders past your hands, palms, finding a little extra flexion in the wrists as well. Extension of the wrist, flexion of the wrist. Stop, y'all. I don't know right now. We're doing yoga. <laughs> All right. Nice work. Go ahead, come back to that neutral tabletop. Tuck your toes under, send your hips up towards the ceiling. You can shorten your step as much as you need to, to come into down dog. If down dog really doesn't work for you, then hang out in a modified version of tabletop and feel free to bend your knees as much as you need to. I'd rather have you bend your knees and find some relaxation and work to bring your chest closer towards your thighs and bring those ears between your biceps. While we're here, let's get another stretch of the neck. So inhale, look up and forward. Exhale, tuck chin to the chest, look towards your knees. Inhale, up and forward. Exhale, chin to chest. One more time, inhale, up and forward. And then come on back down to neutral. Go ahead, keep your right foot planted on the floor and inhale that left leg up towards the ceiling. Try not to turn your, um, center line of the body over to the left as you lift that left leg up. See if you can keep your hips and your chest square to the mat. Make some circles with your ankle in one direction, in the opposite direction, and release your left foot down to the floor. Hold on, I'm gonna tuck my shirt in like a winner because it's moving on me. Awesome, and then we're gonna go ahead and inhale that right foot up towards the ceiling. Make some circles with your ankle in one direction. Make some circles in the other direction. 
and go ahead and release that right foot back down to the floor. Bring your knees down to the floor. Let's relax our wrists for a moment. Send your hips back towards your heels. Walk your hands as far forward as feels good for you as we come into child's pose. I encourage you to really press into the pads of your fingers. The more that you press into the pads or palm of your hands, as you push yourself away from the top of your mat, bringing more of a stretch through the back. And then we're gonna pull ourselves forward, stay low to the ground, your forearms can stay down on the ground. Walk those legs back, take a moment. Let's hang out here in Cobra. Take the tension out of your glutes. You can even shake them a little left and right. Bow, bow, bow. Ah, come back to your slow, relaxed breath. You can bring a little extra stretch to that back by simply lifting your chest up a little bit more, pressing that pubic mount towards the floor, pressing your elbows into the floor. Feel that nice, gentle squeeze of your lower back. Awesome, and then let's change. Walk those hands in a little bit closer. Tuck your toes under again. Send your hips back up towards the ceiling. Pedal those heels out for a moment. Bring some attention and love into your calves. Tuck in my shirt in. Awesome sauce. All right, go ahead, keep your left leg planted. Inhale that right leg up towards the ceiling, and then draw that right knee forward. Inhale it back up towards the ceiling. Draw it forward again. We'll do this one more time. Inhale back up towards the ceiling, and then we're gonna plant that right foot forward. Release your left knee down towards the floor. Untuck your toes. Inhale, lift your chest up and exhale, cactus those arms, maybe even coming into a little bit of a back bend. Inhale, stretch up towards the ceiling, and exhale, release your hands back down towards the floor. Continue to shift the weight forward, just taking a moment, really enjoying the opening of the right side hip, left side hip, left side hip, I'm doing the opposite of you, pardon me. Can you take the rounding out of your upper back, so Pull your chest forward, similar to how we did in cat and cow. And if you need to, you can be a low flying lizard here and allow that right knee to fall heavy towards the side to give yourself some extra space. Take two more breaths. Then go ahead, tuck your back toes under, lift that knee up off of the floor. Take your time, bring your right leg back to meet with your left. Take a moment in plank, and then inhale, send your hips back up towards the ceiling. Find yourself once again in down dog. Pedal through your heels again. Maybe you even press onto the balls of the feet, lift your heels up, drop them to one side of the mat, lift them up, drop them to the other side of the mat, bring you to stretch a little bit more towards the outer thighs and glutes. And then let's go ahead, plant our feet and get the opposite side. So grounding your right ball of the foot to the floor, inhale your left leg up towards the ceiling. Get ready to draw your knee to your nose. Don't plant that foot down. So inhale, shift forward. Knee comes to nose. Exhale, send your leg back up towards the ceiling. Inhale, draw it forward. Exhale, what a great stretch we're getting on that standing leg inner thigh. One more time, inhale, draw it forward, then plant it down this time. Release your right foot down towards the floor. Untuck your toes. Take your time with your breath. Notice if you were really rounding that upper back when you planted your foot down, bring your chest a little forward of your shoulders. You can shift those hips as much as you need to. Maybe you need to press into the tops of your hands. Get ready to lift yourself up. Arms come up overhead. Exhale. Cactus those arms. Mini back bend right here. Inhale back up towards the ceiling. Exhale. Release your hands down to the floor. Just a couple more breaths here. Your left knee can fall heavy towards the side, but take that rounding out of your back. All right, go ahead, tuck your back toe under, press into the ball of your foot, lift your knee up. We'll take another moment here in plank for three, two, one. Send your hips up towards the ceiling, walk your feet up to your hands. 
take a moment when you get there. We're going to hang out in the dangle. So feet are about side by side, maybe hips width distance apart. Really ground through all four corners of your feet. Your hands don't have to touch the floor. If that's not comfortable for you, you can always grab hold of your opposite elbow. But I really want you to find as deep of a forward fold as you can. If you're forward folding and you have no support and your lower back starts to hurt, take a bigger bend of your knees and send your hips towards the wall behind you. And remember, you can always have something on the floor to take a little bit of the um, pressure off of a delightful dingo. Great. Next up, we're going to come into chair pose. So I want you to shift a little more weight into your heels, bend your knees, inhale those arms up overhead, biceps by your ears, continue to stretch your glutes towards the back of the room. We'll hang out here for three, two, one. Inhale, lift yourself all the way up to mountain pose, bring your hands, palms together, and down to heart center. Take a moment, relax your breath. Allow your heart rate to come back down. Finding that one spot to focus your eyes. We're taking a moment with your eyes closed. Back to your ujjayi breathing, if that felt right at the start of class. And emphasizing shoulders released away from ears. We're gonna come into that child's, not child's pose, that chair pose again. So I want you to inhale, stretch your arms up, pull your belly in, exhale, either rain or swan dive down towards the floor. Inhale, come into a half lift. So find some length, a flat back, shoulders released away from ears, and exhale, back down into our forward fold. Coming back to that chair pose, go ahead, bring the weight to your heels, bend your knees, inhale, lift those arms up overhead, and exhale, stand yourself up. Go ahead, relax your arms down by your side. We're gonna come into a figure four stretch right here. You might wanna have your hands at your hips for balance. Let's start with the left foot planted. We're gonna bring the right ankle across the left thigh and then exhale back down into the chair. Make sure you didn't bring too much of the weight Oop. forward to your toes and you're continuing to find that focus with your eyes somewhere in front of you. Focus with your eyes. Engagement of the core is going to help you with your balance. Go ahead, take one more big inhale as you lift yourself up. Stretch those arms up overhead. Let's come back to that forward fold. Exhale all the way down towards the floor. Inhale into a half lift. Exhale back down to forward fold. Inhale, bend your knees, sit those glutes back and lift your arms up, coming to chair pose again. Stretch your glutes towards the back of the room. And on your next inhale, lift yourself up. Exhale, relax your arms down by your side. Let's come into that figure four stretch on the other side. So keeping your right foot planted, we're gonna cross the left ankle over the right thigh. Take your time, sit yourself down into this big figure four stretch. Just two more breaths right here. And on your next inhale, go ahead, lift yourself back up, stretch those arms up overhead. Exhale, swan dive back down towards the floor. Inhale, find your half lift. Exhale, find your forward fold. Inhale, bend your knees, come into chair pose and bring your arms up overhead. Nice, stand yourself all the way up. And we're gonna step that right foot back to come into a crescent warrior. So the back heel of your foot is not touching down towards the floor, just the ball of your foot, and as generous of a bend as you can create through your front left knee. Inhale, bring that right hand towards the back of the mat. We're gonna open up into warrior two. You might need to wiggle your feet to open your step up a little bit more. And then we're going to come into uh, peaceful. So turn your front hand forward, bring that arm up overhead, trace your back hand down your thigh, find that big reach towards the back of the room on your exhale. Inhale, back into warrior two. We're gonna bring that back arm forward, coming through to crescent warrior again. Step your feet together at the top, and then exhale, swan dive all the way down towards the floor. Inhale, come into your half lift. 
by that length through your back, shoulders away from ears, exhale, down to your forward fold, bend your knees, inhale, bring those arms up overhead, back into our chair pose, and then the next inhale, stand yourself up, go ahead, step your left foot back, taking a generous bend through your right knee, keeping those hips forward, we're going to open ourselves to the other side. So this time, right hand comes towards the back of the mat, turn on that back heel, you probably have to turn your foot also, so your feet are perpendicular to each other, ideally your heels are both in the line. Turn your front palm forward, lift it up, peaceful look over your shoulder, inhale back up through warrior two. Swing that back arm forward, turn to the front of your mat, once again, crescent warrior, inhale, step forward, feet together, exhale, rain yourself down towards the floor, inhale into a half lift, exhale into your forward fold, bend your knees, come into chair pose, inhale, lift those arms up, exhale, stand all the way up. Bring your hands, palms together, back down at your heart. Take another moment, just relaxing right here in mountain. Let's get another really big standing forward fold. Nice and gentle, you can come over to one side of your mat. Ah, relax your arms down by your side. Take another moment right here in your stillness. Find your focus. Where is your drishti right now? Your chin is neutral to your chest. Your core is still engaged. Inhale your arms up overhead. Exhale, take a big step to the right as you bring your arms down parallel to the, to the floor. Pardon me. Keep that chest nice and open, but knit that rib cage back together as well. So we're not overarching the back. If you found that overarch, pull that belly in to get rid of it. Your heels can either be invisible behind your toes, or if you don't have any issues with sciatica or your piriformis, you can always even turn your toes in just a little bit, like pizza feet, yum. All right, so with our bellies tight, we're going to hinge forward. Keep looking forward as long as you can the whole way down. And then you can release your hands to the floor right underneath of your shoulders. So we're shifting the weight forward gently. So when you first came down, you might have noticed that your glutes were stretching towards the back of the room, placing your hands down underneath of your chest and shoulders and drawing them forward will help you bring a little bit more weight towards your toes. If you're feeling really flexible today, I'm gonna give you the option um, for a slightly deeper inversion, you can reach back and grab hold of your feet. Maybe you're just grabbing hold to the sides of your feet or the top of your feet, but can you lift your heels up and gently press and step on your fingers? And then from there, you take a slight bend of your elbows and bring your forearms to your shin. Make, take the rounding out of your back and release that chest a little closer towards the floor. And look down with your eyes right between your two big toes. So instead of keeping your chin tucked towards your chest, as if you're working to get your uh, crown of your head or your forehead, where your forehead and hairline meet, coming down towards the floor. If you feel like you're nowhere near that, you can always open your feet a little bit wider to help you work towards with straight legs, bringing your head down towards the floor. So number one is having those straight legs. I don't want you to bring a bend to your knees. Do what your body can today. And once you have those nice straight legs and your head is close towards the floor, it's all about opening the chest. So squeeze your shoulder blades a little more towards each other. See if that helps you get a little closer towards the floor. Just opening that chest will take the rounding out of your back. Nice work. Lift your hands up off the floor. Send them out to the side. Press equally through your feet as you inhale. Lift yourself all the way up. Arms come out to the side. And on your next inhale, step your feet together, bring your arms up overhead, and relax your arms down. Great work. One more time, inhale, arms up overhead, palms come together, step to the right, 
arms come down towards the side. We're going to do that same stretch one more time. If your head touched the floor, you get to heel toe your feet in a little bit closer together. And if your head was still nowhere near the floor, you get to heel toe your feet a little bit farther apart. So squeeze those shoulder blades together, knit your rib cage in, keep your belly tight, hinge forward from the hips, coming down, starting with that flat back. You can keep the flat back the whole time and just release your fingers to the floor. And you can walk your hands a little forward too. So this is similar to down dog, but, but not quite as much pressure um, through the upper body or as it's a different stretch through the legs as well. If you're feeling good and your legs are straight, you can start to walk your hands in a little closer towards your feet again. As you continue to relax your upper body down towards the floor, remember most of the weight is in your toes, so it makes it easy to lift your feet up, to give yourself a little pressure on the fingertips, a little stimulation in that area, taking a bend of your elbows, generously pulling. Pulling is the object of stretching here, so pulling to create a slightly deeper stretch. This is also a posture that you can work on by placing straps underneath of your feet and using the straps to help you pull down and forward to enjoy that giant hamstring stretch. Release your hands from underneath of your feet if your hands are on the floor. We're about to lift them up, so draw that belly in nice and tight, ground through your feet, send your arms out to the side, and on your inhale, as slow as you can, the whole length of your breath, lift yourself up, step your feet together, bring your arms up overhead, and then exhale, relax your arms down by your side. Let's make our way down to the floor for a couple final stretches before Savasana. Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, rain your fingers down towards the floor. Get ready for that half lift. Inhale into your half lift. Exhale back to your forward fold. Remember, you can bend your knees and shift the weight into your heels. And then with your hands on the floor, we're going to gently release those knees back down towards the floor. I want you to bring your toes together. Open those knees nice and wide. And once again, send your hips back towards your heels in child's pose. We'll take a nice stretch of our shoulders here in child's pose. So go ahead, keep your left hand down on the floor. You can press yourself up gently. We're going to thread that right arm underneath a little thread the needle and child's pose together. Find the stretch that feels best for you. So maybe you want to really press that right shoulder into the floor and take a little extra twist as you lift your left shoulder away from the mat. Or maybe you want to walk your left hand fingertips forward, keeping the stretch a little bit more just in the shoulder as opposed to throughout the back as well. We'll take three breaths. And then you probably need to walk your, your front arm in just a little bit, press into it to unthread the needle, and then let's thread on the opposite side. So once again, option to really press your right shoulder into the floor and lift that left shoulder up and feel more of a squeeze throughout the mid upper back, or walk your hands forward, turning your face down towards the floor to keep the stretch just focused in the shoulder. On your inhale, start to walk that front hand forward. Next up, bring your knees back into tabletop. We're gonna come into puppy pose. So getting that nice stretch through our chest and upper back. Keeping your hips stacked on top of your knees, you're gonna walk your hands forward and work to bring your chest down to the floor. We're only gonna stay here for four breaths. So see how low you can release yourself down to the mat. Can you even stretch your chin forward? Your toes might still come together in a little bit of a tripod and that's okay. If your hips happen to sink back towards your heels, that's all right as well. Last breath. And on your exhale, oof, pull ourselves all the way forward, coming back into Sphinx pose. So take the tension out of your glutes once again. 
press into your elbows, look up towards the ceiling. And on your exhale, go ahead and make a nice pillow with your hands, bring your forehead to your pillow, bend your knees and windshield wipe your legs right and left, right and left. Go ahead, extend your arms out to the side in a T. Keep your right foot down on the floor, press into your left hand and we're just gonna roll over onto our right side and touch our left toe to the floor. And then we're gonna roll right back onto our bellies, plant that left foot down on the floor, press into our right hand and roll over and touch the, the right toes to the floor over our left leg. Let's go ahead and get two more on each side. So just gently rolling over, taking a nice clamshell of the leg, just warming up the body a little bit here, preparing it for a slightly longer stretch that's coming up. One more time each side, just passing through, and then we'll hold out in this stretch for a couple breaths. Ah, oh, feels so good. All right, so you've really gotten to warm up those shoulders a little bit. Extend your right arm out to the right, bring your left hand in close towards your chest, really press and roll over onto the right side of the body, keeping your right hand palm in line with where your shoulder is. You can relax your head down to the floor. Up to you if you wanna keep your hand close by your chest for a little bit of grounding. You can also walk your hand away to bring the stretch more through that upper back or inhale your left hand up towards the ceiling, bend at the elbows, make a nice little broken wing to stretch through the left shoulder a little bit more if you need to. You know how your body feels today and what feels best. Feel free to try them all and then come into what works for you on this side today for three breaths. gave yourself a broken wing like I did, use your next inhale to stretch your left arm up towards the ceiling, or if you extend it on the floor, walk it back in towards your chest, place it down underneath of your left shoulder and roll back over onto your belly. Extend your left arm out, keeping that hand palm in line with your armpits, bring your right hand in, take your time and gently roll over onto the side and then release your temple down towards the floor. Now, if it's too much for you to clamshell your legs, you can always stagger your legs here, maybe staggering your bottom leg forward and the top leg back for a little bit more of a, of a stretch throughout the hips, or if that's still too much, keeping them stacked together, or even the top leg forward can be a little bit more gentle. You just gotta find what works for you today. I can tell I need a little bit more stretch through the upper back shoulder on this side, so I'm gonna walk my right hand as far away from possible, from me as possible, and press the pads of the fingers gently into the floor to continue to be activated. Just two more breaths, you got this. Awesome, take your time, gently roll over onto your back, belly once more. Press into your hands, palms, we're gonna lift ourselves up, come into tabletop, cross your legs behind you, and then walk your hands back to find yourself on your glutes, extend your legs in front of you, take your time, we're gonna lay down on our back, we're gonna get one more stretch through the legs before we come into our final savasana. You can challenge your abs here as you lay down by grounding your feet to the floor and not using your hands, but if you need to use your hands to help you carefully lower down, that is awesome as well. Once we get there, we're gonna draw both knees up towards our chest. You can draw them up one at a time, but I don't want you to draw your knees up to the chest so much that you're rounding that lower back off the floor. So keep your lower back ground to the floor. Take your right hand and bring it to the top of your left knee and use your left hand to reach underneath of your um, chin. Yeah, calf. To grab hold of the top of your right foot. Bring the sole of your right foot as close towards your glutes as possible. As you stretch through your knee towards the wall away from you, you'll feel that big stretch in your quad. 
This is one of my favorite quad stretches because you can really relax the rest of your body on the floor as much as possible. Two more breaths right here. I hope you feel it. And on that exhale, I want you to carefully release your right foot from your left hand. You can bring your left hand back to your left knee and then draw that right leg back in. Once more, knees to chest. Left hand comes to the top of the right knee. Right hand grabs hold of the left foot as you carefully bring the outside of the foot to the floor and then use your breath to bring the outside of the leg to the mat as much as possible. Just enjoy whatever it is your body can do today. Hopefully as you gently really focus on kind of folding your leg in. So there is a little bit of me working to create some, a decreased angle of my heel towards my inner thigh and then stretching through that knee towards the bottom of the mat. Take your time, gently release your left foot. Once more, draw both knees up towards your chest. Give yourself a beautiful massage. Oh, it feels so good. Just making some circles, pressing our sacrum into the floor. Go ahead, change direction of your circles. Bring your toes together, open your knees nice and wide. One more nice opener of the hips. And then take your time as you release your feet down towards the floor. You're welcome to stay here in reclined bound angle as we come into our final savasana, or you have the option to extend your legs out in front of you. Find what feels good for you. If your back is hurting, you can always bend your knees and create a nice little TP with your legs. You can relax your arms by your side or continue grounding with your hands on your heart and on your belly or palms face up towards the ceiling to receive the energy out there. We got two minutes to spend right here in our final savasana as we close out class. Let's take this next minute silently, just coming back to our breath, tuning into how your body is feeling and hopefully it feels different than when class started. Make sure you're bringing these breaths all the way down to the very bottom of your diaphragm. And please remember you can stay here in this final savasana for as long as continues to work for you today. We'll end class down here on the floor. If you have any questions or concerns about anything that I said or we did today, I hope that you'll reach out until we see each other again. Continue to think good thoughts. Speak good words, eat good foods, do good deeds, and all the things it takes to nourish ourselves from the inside out. So glad you were able to join me for today's practice. I hope it leaves you feeling empowered and amazing, because I know that you are. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone, and know that the light within me honors and sees and is so thankful for the light within you. Namaste.